Alright guys, David Texas here and look what we got to work with today. We're looking with the Ibanez, what is it? It's a Roadside Series 2. Cool, cool guitar. Now look what we're going to be doing to it. We're going to fix this patch job here where it looks like it's you know pretty not back to normal again. And we're going to set it up this guy to play it really fast action on it. And why don't you introduce um, yourself dude and, and play a uh, little bit for us. My name's Tim. Uh, I, uh, I, I run sound for two different bands. Uh, we, uh, I write sound for a Jeff uh, Jay Burns band, and cool. write sound for, uh, the Heidi Sound. Oh, and, cool, uh, cool. So, so you play around here locally, or just everywhere? Uh, it's everywhere. We're going, we'll be in, uh, San Antonio in, uh, Jan uh January, is it? Yeah. Cool. We'll be down in San Antonio in January. And then we're going to go down to Houston, and, uh, like a week after that. Mm. Cool. Pretty big gets coming up. All right, well, let's hear a little bit from your guitar, see what it sounds like. Let me get a pick out of here. You got one? Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go for I it. I am a musician, though. Right? Gotcha. Don't leave home without it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a sweet little axe there, dude. I love it, man. I've, I've had it for a little while. I've had it about 14 years now. Cool. And uh, this here happened like five years ago, and I've never done yeah. nothing with it, so I'm, I need it. Well, what we're going to get it fixed up for you and uh, give you a call when it's ready to come pick it up, okay? Yes, sir. I All right. That. Well, listen, hang in there, guys. We'll show you what it, like, what it looks like when we're finished, and as we fix it, we're going to be doing to it. And make sure he's happy with the work, okay? So hang in there, guys. Well, I finally got a chance to get to this one. It's been a while, a few days. Now, what's going on with this one is, is not anything to do with the uh, guitar other than just setting it up, okay? That's just a common setup. What's really going on with this guitar is restoration. And what I've got to do is cut in a piece of uh, pit guard to replace this little nightmare here. Uh, the parts are missing, you didn't have those. And he wants it to look nice again somehow. And what I'm gonna do is cut in a piece, maybe here or here, sorry, here or here, depending on what sample you brought me. You brought me a replacement. The same uh, uh, black, white, black, three ply, same uh, basic shape, but uh, won't fit the uh, guitar. It's a different uh, setup on the, uh, on the pickup. So, I've got a sample here to measure up and I first got to take this off, the strings off it and uh, go from there. So hang in there guys while I set this camera up and uh, get a chance to see me work on something other than just uh, you know, electronics and on bodies and stuff. I get a chance to do a restoration on pick card. Should be fun. Should be fun to watch. So hang in there guys. What I'm going to do guys is take these strings out of this body and uh, Get that done. Once they're out, I'll get a chance to work on that uh, kick guard for him. I'll take the guard off. And looks like we got another issue here, guys. Take a quick look so you'll know. No questions later. We got a cracked guard here, too. Look at this. That needs to be repaired. So, while I'm doing it, if that can stay on there long enough, I'll uh, do pretty much the same job I'll do to the front on these cracked ones here. He's got several of these are cracked. And that's, that's when you over tighten them. You shouldn't tighten these down like, you know, real tight. They don't require it. They don't need it. So, hang on. I want to get these strings out of here. Oh, man. But, you know, things get old. They get brittle. That happens. Get the uh, old steel wool out and get that dirty stuff off there which I can do on this too, later on, but uh, I will fix this before uh, putting it back on. I don't want that thing to crack on him. 
you know. Of course, we didn't agree to doing that, but you know, shoot, it's here. <laughs> and it'll make good video, so that's all there's to it. Wow, these are really stuck in there. Dang it. It's one reason I hate these darn little buggers. Now, get these out, I'll take a G string off his guitar and help push these back through on the bobbins. I find his G string in this grouping. Or is you? There you is. That usually does the trick. It's strong enough to push them through, okay? And big enough to catch that bobbin on the other side, help pull it, push it out. Wow, that's gonna be really stubborn. These are just stuck in there. Son of a gun. I've never seen anything like this before. Not this stuck. There we come. All right, holy cow. Well, these long, uh, they couldn't be in there long, they're not that used. You know, they're not just all beat up looking. Let's give them a good twist. You can see some of that's going on. Get that bobbin to move some. That is just plain jammed in there tight. That bobbin didn't want to fit in there and just pulled it through anyway. There we go. It's going to just take some work. I think there's some gunk in there behind it. It's helping these to stick. Wow. I hope they all come out. I'm trying to get that bottom to twist at least. The move in there so it'll break free of whoever's holding it. Well, this one wants to come out. The E-string at least wants to come out. Come on, guys. Quit giving me a hard time. Well, I've already tried a G-string going up there and pushing now. That didn't work. Alright, the only other choice is getting a uh probe I've got. Fit. I don't know and get it to uh, go up in there and push these out. There it went, finally. Man, those were stuck. Here's the probe I'm using. It fits these holes pretty good. Next one's out, wow, okay. Oh, this is what's doing it, having all the tools you could possibly use and then too many. <laughs> Yes, I've got a little slender probe to pokey things out of you with. <laughs> These just don't look that old to be stuck in there like that. There must be something in that uh, slot that I need to clean out. i got to check that out and see. I sure bent these up pretty good. <laughs> Getting these little buggers out of here. All right, like I always do, I wrap these up so that no one steps on them in the shop. No one, nothing like a bare foot on a G-string or an E. You have to go all the way up in your skin. Those really sting. And if you're unlucky, <laughs> really unlucky, like unlucky Pierre, you step on one that's broken off and it goes all the way up in the skin and disappears up there. And they got to use a magnet to get it back out again, which is not good at all or use a scalpel and get it out with. I've actually heard of that happening. Someone stepped on a string and it was broken off short. And they had to actually <coughs> go in there and scalpel that darn thing out, open the skin up. So they walk around with a big patch on your foot for weeks. Because for some reason, <coughs> cuts on your feet don't heal very quickly. I guess it's because it's so far away from the heart, but uh, cuts and sores and puncture wounds on the feet take like twice as long as anywhere else on the body. Even the hands that you know are far away from the heart, but uh, the feet—that's the furthest. 
So take care of your feet, guys. <laughs> I sound like a chiropodist. The son of a chiropodist. That'd be good for a TV show. Son of chiropodist. This one's theme song going. He was so neat because he played with feet. <laughs> oh, he had such a fetish. He liked to play with feet and lettuce. <laughs> lettuce. Okay. Well, what else rhymes with fetish? You know, tell me. <laughs> okay, that's gone. They were kind of dirty, but still not that old. Anyway, I want to figure out what the heck's going on in there. You know? I can't let that go on too far without my curiosity playing up. And my, I have a tool that's for like a 22 pistol, which I don't own anymore, but it's got little bristles on it. I could do is with a ramrod, go up there so I can't clean anything you know nasty out with it. And it may, <coughs> the shaft of it may just fit inside this, you know, readily. I love that word, readily. <laughs> It may fit inside there well, okay? Those little metal holes right there in that block. I think there's something in there making it go sticky sticky. Now we've got this open. Look how they soldered this, guys. They went crazy on this thing. And it's all bent up. <laughs> Look at that. Man, this first time I've seen the inside of it, they went nuts. Okay, and they got the strings the springs on strange, but uh, to each his own. That's what they like. That's what they like. Oh, Ritzy. And the last one I looked at had some noiseless springs. They had some black ones. They were painted, and supposedly not as uh, noisy as the uh, other ones are. Okay, so I've got one that's tough and one that's easy to get off. It always figures. So I'll get my handy dandy little tool, put this back on where it belongs, like that, the rubber cover. A little handy dandy tool out. And wiki walkie this off. Bingo. Ah, see? Ah, good tool. Okay. Put these in his bag. Where is his bag? Here it is. Uh, put these in his bag. See? Uh, uh, I can't see the name. I won't show it to you. <laughs> He'll introduce himself at the end of the video. Anyway, put these in his bag nice and safe. I'm a little concerned about this breaking off. These little uh, splits in here, especially this one. Wow. I've got some aluminum tape I'm going to be using along with some very special glue to fix his with, and I may be doing that to these two to help him out. Like I said, we didn't agree to that, but uh, you know, it, never helped, it never hurts to help someone along. You, you know, if you can do it, why not? I'm that kind of guy that I like to work on guitars. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. And here I'm gabbing, I forgot the one thing to pull off. <laughs> no, not that, the black little five-way. Came right off in my hands. Didn't need, didn't need the tool. And these look like little small jobbies. These look like regular fenders. Oh, you doki. These nuts. Let's just take this and just get them loose and get them off. Do it the quicker way. Yeah, just one little twist and it does it. It's full of dirt. That happens. Things get dirty. But all in all, it's a pretty nice clean guitar. You know, he does take care of his stuff. See, I call this road dirt. You know, gigging stuff. It just gets on things. Now what not to lose is this little flip switch here. <laughs> this I might have a hard time finding a replacement for if I lose that little nut. 
I'm sure those are just all over the world, everywhere you can find them. So, back into his bag it goes. And of course, we fold this over a bunch of times so nothing falls out of it. Alright, last little one of these. Let me get this thing off. Then we'll undo his pickups. Get them off the pickup god. Okay, now comes the screwing. <laughs> Unscrewing, sorry. Okay, put my little readily tool away right there. Leave that one alone. So now comes the unscrewing, guys, and I'll try to make sure you see some of this. Keep it on camera. Here's the broken part. Nasty, nasty. I think this piece right here is just sitting there. Not good. I need that. Uh, no, it's glued to the body. I knew it. Ah, doggone it. The overkill has it glued to the body. Pick cards glued to the body down here. I have to get that free. And hopefully I can do it free with a nice clean unsharp blade type thing. Like a really thin feeler gauge. Just get in there and pop it loose. You don't want to use an X-Acto knife because you end up shaving the wood. Even though it's under the pick guard, you still don't want to do that. And a nice thin feeler gauge is exactly what you want for the job. Just to get in there and free it up. And when used in the hands of an expert, <laughs> it works pretty good. Okay, hold on guys. Are we here next? Yes, we're here next. Okay, here we go. Sorry. One more up here. Uh -uh. All right. Okay, here one here. <laughs> now remember, guys, you asked me. All right, the last one's here, and then we'll figure out what's still attached and what we really need to take off what we can leave alone. Of course, the pickups are still attached. There we go. Now she's away. So, we need to push through the uh, little pots. Push those through. Need to disconnect the uh, pickups from uh, the uh, pick guard itself. And disconnect the five way switch. And we should be free. Yay! Of course, this is just spinning while it falls off. <laughs> Come on, baby. And it's off, so we we'll lose that screw. Wow, that's really stuck. Now, tell me you didn't glue this one in there, too. Feels like this pot's been glued in there. There it came. All right, now. How are these being held in there? Yes, it's sure as heck can be they're all three screws so they all gotta come out and all be reset <laughs> it's gotta come all the way out so the adjustment screws on this actually what's holding it on the pit guard hope you can see this guys Now you gotta come all the way out. One of the springs, don't want to lose the springs. And what I'll do, I'll put some painter's tape over these. So that they'll just be inside the cavity of the body. And not flipping and flopping around. Come on baby, I know you're out. Why is you doing this? Okay, somebody wants me. Two people want me. Yay! There's that extra little spring. Let's see who's calling and wanting me on messages. Okay, what do they have to say? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
Okay, so somebody's coming by Monday. All right, good. We're bringing the guitar over Monday. Finally, he's been sending me messages about that for a week. I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it. Okay, bring it. Stop messaging me. Just bring it. <laughs> Get that thing set up and fixed. I'm doing a lot more fixes than I thought I'd have to do. But I'm just showing how to do these setups on all these different models. But, live and learn. Get to do what the owners want. Because this is going to be a setup, a bunch of documentary video type things. How to set these up properly. Since uh, I've seen so many <laughs> in the last few years, they're set up very badly. You know, by supposing text. Not just the owners themselves, but they're telling me this is what they pay to have done. It's like, huh? You actually had yours, you actually paid money to have your guitar set up at 1064 on the low end and 864 on the high end. Okay. <laughs> and you wonder why it plays badly. The guy goes, well, that's all I could do. I said, well, that's all you wanted to do. That's all I wanted to try to do. He sure didn't care about what you wanted, did he? And that's what kind of confuses people. When they come over to pick their guitars up, they are set to factory. Original factory specs on them. And what I do, I hand them to them and say, all right, now, what exactly do you want other than factory? Play it and tell me. You want it lower? You want it higher? That's what a professional, you know, setup's all about. It's not just saying, okay, here it is, get the hell out of here. Give me my money and go, there's a guitar in a case, bye. Or pay the cashier, see ya. That's not a professional setup, that's a blow job. I'm sorry, I can't say that. <laughs> that's not a professional setup, that's kind of a rip off. And one guy said the only thing he got was a bad tune up and a bad intonation on his. Nothing else, and it cost him 60 bucks. Well, you've been going to the wrong shop. It's one of those things people tell me. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> well, I've been right here fixing guitars. To all my regular people. And that's what makes it tough sometimes on these guitars. I've got a regular crowd I work with, right? Look at that. That's just glued, guys. Let me show you this. I don't know if that's runoff glue or just glue he put on there. He did try to tape it. You know, that's what you should do. Anytime you put things together, you use that aluminum tape. So you knew what? You knew to do that. Okay, now, let's cover these up with painter's tape. After we clean all the stuff out and get all the parts out that fill into it. And those all together. Make sure we don't do any damage to anything. Okay, so there's a little, what you gonna call it? A little ground wire, and all the rest of it. So, painter's tape to the rescue to hold this baby in place while I work on it. Simple, simple. The only thing to happen to is gear. Which was nice if anything does happen to it, I can fix it. I know how. I sure worked on a number of fenders in my life. And this is just another one. Okay, okay. Now, we're going to do it. I have to duplicate that one little spot on this pit guard. And I need to get this off of here, which I just came off with pulling on it, guys. Look at that. It's cracked right off. Okay. 
Where are you, camera? Uh -huh. Right there. Just came off and off. That was not coming off. Holy cow. Yeah, there it came. So here are the parts that are left. Alright, get it it. We'll put those in the bag too. <laughs> Gives you superstitious. Some people are. Alright, there's your broken shit. And now we'll get the new pick guard and see what type of matchup job it's gonna to take to get those two to work together. The place is in the broken spot. Oh let's see. As you can see, there's quite a difference in color. <laughs> okay, look at that. Wow, this is a good. This is a good one. It doesn't match. And here's the uh, broken one. They couldn't find one to replace with. No one had one to match this thing. Of course, this is real close. You know, this angle here. See these guys? It's not like I just put it together and cut it. Okay. They're the wrong shape, wrong angle, wrong curvature. You see that? Right? Then, uh. Now I'm willing to bet that little there is not the right shape either, or the right size. You need to be whittled down. So I have to. I'm going to cut that piece in. I'm going to have to, uh. resize the whole thing. Next on the agenda is to go ahead and take off, uh this uh, foil tape he's got on here. That's the right type, just to get enough parts to do the job with. So, we're just gonna take that foil tape off. It should come off pretty readily. Go on there a while. Just get a good end to start on. Wow, this is really old. There we go. Oh, I got an to start on now. It's gonna peel. Okay, finally, yes. Get some of the old tape off there. Never want to use somebody else's work. I'll have to remove some of that glue off there as well. So that's not a mess. Jeez. Kind of like you had a lot of tape to use, so you just used it. Anyhow, I'm trying to keep this in the camera view. Huh. Now I'm going to a dead spot here to get this knife. There we go. And let's tape off. And I've got some excellent solvent to get this uh, glue off here, but it may cut into the plastic, which I don't want to try. So, I'm going to start off with hot water and steel wool and just lightly abrase it. Slightly kind of sand that stuff off there, rather than trying to chemically remove it. That makes any sense. I hope it does, because that's the best way to do this. I have seen boards just absolutely melt. And there's some of the solids tried on them. <laughs> I've seen the aftermath, what's left of them. You don't want to cut into the board, you want to cut under that tape. Get nice and airy to pull. Mm. And one reason, guys, these guitars take so long to get back to you, is these videos take a long, long time to shoot and to edit. And until I finish editing, <clears throat> you have a chance to look at the finished product. I'm not really sure if I've got everything I need. You know, I'll make the, sure the uh, videos are complete. I 
don't want to try to pull this off little tiny piece by piece, but I can. I want to try to pull off big pieces at a time. Like that. Get this thing over with. You know, get some nice hot water and a little bowl. Some steel wool and go after this thing. Peace, guys. Bingo. All right. Some steps off there now. A little hanger on. Got it. Okay, most of that crud's gone. So, like I said, get a bowl of hot water and some uh, gloves to put on. And get real hot water. And uh, still won't get that crud off there. Try not to spread it any I feel I have to. I have plenty of paper towels to suck that stuff up once it melts from the hot water. I'm sure I get all these little tiny pieces up off my mat. And as you can see, this is what the repair is going to be right through there. And on the extra piece of a uh, bit guard, I'll make sure to make plenty of room <laughs> on this when I cut it extra room so I can adjust it where I need to be adjusted so hang in there while I continue to clean this up so what do you do uh, he brought it to me told me there's no rush getting it fixed and uh, what I've been trying to do for a long time for like almost two months is to die as it is and uh, that totally failed. I tried all kinds of uh, dyes, all types of treatment to the plastic, uh, the white one he brought to me. Nothing worked. Like, oh my God, now what do I do? So anyway, I went online and I saw on eBay, they had some pick cards for sale, some older ones. And I found this one, which is a perfect color match to, the, to his same pick card. I'm going to cut it in right like that and shape it up and go from there. So, I got my vise to hold it steady for me. I need to have a nice, sharp, straight line. And that'd be perfect, but it's got to be uh, good. I also have a uh, cutting tool. This is a fine blade cutting tool. It's similar to a... Uh, <laughs> it's similar to a coping saw, but it's not as deep as a coping saw. But uh, I've also have a coping saw that I may use instead. I don't know. Let's see. What I want are the blades uh, teeth on this to be as small as possible, and this is the smallest blades I've got in the shop on this particular saw. Now we'll go all the way through. That may go close. Anyway, we'll have to check it out and see. And it's always important to get that first stroke started properly. And it's okay to miss it long. You just don't want to miss this thing short or go into this line I've drawn. And I'll just cut it straight down this line or to the left of that, right of that line. Just like that. Make sure I stay right beside the line and don't cross it. Like I said, as long as I don't go 
over that line. I'm okay. Now I'm right next to it, and I got to pull that saw off a little bit to the right to keep from crossing that line. But it's not there yet. It won't cross yet. I pull it away a little bit. And when doing this, it's always best to keep checking it. Now I see I'm right where I want to be, just to the right of that line. I'm leaving enough extra. So there's no issue. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so looks like it's gonna cut pretty well. No problemos there. <laughs> At first, I was really concerned about cutting into this because this is a hard pick card to find. I tried even to find him a new pick card for this, and they're not available. You just can't find one. They just stopped making them. And I think that's because the guitar he has just was too expensive, you know? It's a very special little guitar. And I think for what it was, it's just too much wood and too much electronics and just too good. And not many were sold. And that happens. You know, you get some custom West Paul that just don't sell very many. They don't expect to sell very many. And right now, I'm staying to the right of that line very much so, so I can come back later and either route that or file that straight up and down. So it'll meet up with my uh, other part. I'm going to go real easy on this last piece. There we go, straight through. All right. It's all on the right side of that line. And I got plenty of uh, extra left on this thing to uh, file down, straighten it up, flatten it out, whatever we got to do. So that is the best way to do this. So I'll come in here and take a look and see what I got to do to match these up, get the best line I can find on it. Like as such, all right? Like about like that. You get those together and uh, take off this extra on the bottom and make a little, you know, a little swerve on that, and go from there. So hang in there, guys. Okay, guys, I'm working on this repair, and this is the one that's taking such an awful long time. I actually spent like a month and a half trying to dye this uh, part right here off another white one to try and match this thing up and it just never would match up. And the problem is you can't get a replacement uh, pick card. They don't make these for this guitar anymore. So I never gave up. I went on to eBay and I found one that I was pretty sure to match and it does and uh, what we're going to do just come in here and give us a, a little sloping curve. All right, I've got a little French curve in there in my uh, drawer of shame somewhere. And I'll put a little bit of curve into it to get the edge off that and cut it at a 35 degree angle, all right? Okay, here we go again. Let's see if I can't stop doing this. Okay, hang in there, guys. We'll answer the phone. Well, <laughs> That was a phone call. That was a guy waiting to get in the shop. So, I'm going to take this little protractor here. And I'll give myself just a little gentle curve to follow. If I can get past that darn little knob there, that little switch. I don't have to freehand this, but I don't have to. following this curve just like that oh my pencil's not out darn it oh man <laughs> everything's set up perfectly it's ready to rock and roll what happens 
Okay, so follow this line. Be right there and curve off. Okay, camera, thank you very much. <laughs> What I've done, guys, I took my little protractor out and I followed the curvature of the uh, original piece. And what I'm doing is going to cut this at an angle, just like that. Once I put it in my vise, and uh, that'll be that. I'll clean all this off. I'll uh, sand these very gently, just to get them all level with one another, have a nice straight edge to them. Get all the pencil markings off them and uh, then get the glue out with the filament tape and the uh, aluminum tape and tape it up so it won't go nowhere. Of course, there won't, there won't be tape on top of it, I can't do that. But uh, that uh, slower drying glue will be on this and I'll make some type of little bracket to hold it with, uh, some type of vice, little clamp. Maybe my, one of my vices is to hold it in position while it dries so it won't have something that will stick to when it's finished drying up and curing. Okie dokie. So the next step is to get my little saw out, my little hand saw, and just very gently just cut that at a little angle because I can't freehand a uh, router <laughs> with the uh, 35 degree uh, angle bit. And I can't make a jig to do this thing, it just takes way too long. This is a fix-it job, not a historic restore. Okie dokie. So I'll take my finest, finest uh, teeth saw, finest teeth saw, which is this one right here, right? Put in my vise and come in at an angle and slowly but surely get that uh, cut properly. So hang in there, guys, while I set up to cut it. All right, guys. Well, this is the best start area for this. And like I said, I come in at an angle while I'm cutting this. I can't cut it just up and down. And uh, it's not going to be easy. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I'm thinking about getting my Dremel cutter out and doing this with my Dremel. To get that angle on this thing. Because it's got to be sloped as I cut down into it. I'm thinking what I probably should do. God, I wish I get my router out and do this thing. I'd just do it in a second. I might have a jig to set this thing into. To hold it, uh, gosh, 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 this is always something up, always something new to do and try in my shop. Hang in there, guys, while I figure this out. Well, I shaped the rest of it by hand, <laughs> and it came out pretty good. If all the uh, curvature the way I want it to do, where are you, piece? There you are. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. I got a little lip there I want to take off, but that's about it. The biggest part I got to do is take all this old glue resin off of it. And if I can just follow this camera. <laughs> Let's just try this. Much easier. All this old glue resin off of it. Look at that. I can't tape that to the. Uh, I can't use the reinforced tape and aluminum tape on this. I gotta get it all off first. And the best way to do it is to get some of that gooby gone. I've got it, but I'm worried about the effect it may have on the color of this old thing. I don't want to take any color off of it. It's gotten deep into this plastic so I'm doing this all by hand not fun I'm being kind of paranoid about this piece right <laughs> I mean, hang in there guys while I set this up to put it together again well okay uh <laughs> four phone calls later with guys coming over bringing their guitars over I'm back at this again, and what I planned to do was trim this uh, part here off at an angle 
or maybe come in flat, I'm not really sure, but you can see I left a lot of space there extra and trim it down on the edge here so they all meet and they'll be nice and smooth and perfectly fitting and get that done. But right at the moment, they don't fit real well. There's some gaps in here. I've got to saw this thing straight, or actually I'll, I'll cut it with an X-Acto knife with a box cutter and shave it. Where that, see that extra line is there? I don't know if you can see that or not, guys. Hold on. There's a line there you can see right above this uh, little flipper here. It needs to meet that. So I gotta finish that off with an X-Acto knife. And that's the way I left it because I didn't want to cut too close to the line. So I'm always afraid to cut on the line for fear that I may cut off too much. So I always cut in front of it and I always get too much. <laughs> anyway, it should meet up without any gaps. That's what I'm you know, shooting for as, as you know, close as it possibly humanly can. But it's got the right shape. It's got the right uh, position. Everything's going right on this little cut. Except for the final meetup with this other piece, it's got to be shaved. And uh, it should work perfectly. It should fit in there perfectly as well. So everything's going good. <laughs> got to make sure it fits on this thing here too. And it's going to hide this one hole here that I'll have to fill in with putty. And I've got to drill a new hole here for this. As well as I may drill another one up here. And uh, just barely drill it, then use my routing tool that has a taper to it. I'm uh, oh, sorry, taper tool, taper cutter that uh, has a taper to it that will leave that little cut looking there in it. What else could go wrong today? <laughs> anyway, what I was saying, I think, before the camera went off, there's an extra hole here. I'm going to go ahead and put it into this top piece I've adding to it for stability. I'll fill in this hole that I can't uh, cover. I thought I may be able to cover it, but I just can't do it. It just won't work. And uh, I'm going to take and taper this piece here. I left an extra space here on this uh, original piece so I can move this body into a smaller piece into it properly and have it square up. Now, there'll always be a line there. You can't hide that fact. But uh, you can actually put some white on this to help, uh, help it from showing. You know, white on both both of these pieces. You know, white that little inner piece out. And that way, the black might not show as much. But uh, the trick is get these all to match up just as best as I can. Drill a new hole in this one to meet that hole there for stability. So I have two pieces being held down in two spots, and hide this extra hole here that I don't need. So that should work out pretty well. And that cut I made into it came out really nice. I mean, the curvature to it, nice, nice. I may round that edge off just a little bit. I'm not really sure. But that's being done with exacto knives, not with a saw or anything. And it's all handcrafted. So it's like, we'll see. We'll have to hang in there. So hang in there, guys. While four or five more guys come over here with their guitars, I'm going to have to cut away because one's driving up right now. So hang in there. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> okay, well guys, uh, I had all the guitars come in, all of them had special needs and, and problems uh, to take care of, <laughs> and I still haven't finished this part yet, and it's 4 o'clock. I don't know what it is about this pick guard. First it was uh, Trying to make that uh, bone white one match this uh, up as possible, as much as close as possible. And now it's just getting time to do it. I finished off, blew it, and set it up. <laughs> I can't believe it. And I'm exhausted. It's four o'clock, and I'm just pooped. But uh, we had a bunch come in that had special requirements and needs, and I had to set those up and fix those uh, for guys having gigs this weekend. You know, my uh, regular guys. But the uh, good news is that uh, he says there's no rush to get this. Uh, he will get it here soon. And it will look really especially nice. I think I've done a pretty decent job of this. And uh, he should be happy with it. And uh, all fixed up. <laughs> wow, what a day it's been. Oh. Anyway, part of it, I bought all brand new uh, 
screws for this guitar's pick guard. And I'll put the old ones on there, some are pretty screwed up, and worn out and boogered out and wallered. So just a little bit of the extra benefit to him for letting me take as long as I did. But uh, it all had to do with trying to get this thing to match up to the wrong, I mean the very much wrong, uh, bone white uh, old pick guard he brought over. It just was just so wrong. Now I couldn't get that stain to work on any of it. All the tricks I learned on uh, YouTube, on uh, Google, you know, people talking about how they stained them. I think they're full of shit. Because all I ended up was with a dirty uh, white pit guard that all it wiped right off again. And uh, there's nothing, you know, I even tried uh, scratching it up was still wool to, uh, you know, mar up the uh, outside of it some to get a better shot at, at uh, that uh, dye and those different things, getting them uh, color to it, and it still didn't work. So, hang in there, guys. Maybe tomorrow I can finish the guitar up, call him up and say, it's ready. <laughs> so hang in there. Okay guys, well there we are. Uh, we're about ready for the glue up. Unfortunately, there's always going to be a line there that uh, you can see, but uh, it looks pretty good considering it was smashed to bits earlier. And we'll go ahead and drill those holes into it that needs to be drilled and go from there. So hang in there guys. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's not set up right yet. It's got to be leveled up on front. It's a little indented, but this is uh, a metalized tape as well as there's a filament tape on this and that's what's going to give it strength once I glue it up. This is a filament tape. So anyway, hang in there guys while I do all these other things. Alright, so that wrinkle is out. It's nice and level in the front. I'll check that one more time before I uh, put the glue to it. <coughs> and put something underneath here that uh, you know the glue can go on and you know, spread on to it not on my mat. What I'm going to do with this glue, this is right here, it's number 30 glue. Whoopsie, sorry. It's a very thick uh, super glue. And I'm going to use that to uh, create like a bond here between the uh, filament tape and the metal tape and the plastic uh, pick guard itself. As well as I'll put a, uh, what you call it, uh, I'll finish it off by putting metal tape back where it was on this guitar as well as part. Cover up that little mess, get that covered nicely, make it look better. And it may need it for uh, electrical uh, cert, uh, grounding issues or maybe some buzzing issues. Anyway, like I said, we're going to use this type of glue to create like a little shelf here that uh, will help stabilize this guitar's pick guard, this little, this little uh, added spot to it. And uh, just basically take a toothpick or something, something uh, wood and just uh, push it along to spread it a bit and go from there let it dry out whoopsie <laughs> get something underneath my mat or underneath the pick guard so the mat doesn't get stuck up with the stuff okay this will be a good start with this Make sure that line is as straight as I can get it, like that, and go from there. Okay, so we're going to put this all over this and spread it out while it cures to make a bond between these these two different products, the filament tape and the uh, aluminum and the pick guard itself that way you know, like a little plastic sheeting behind it now if I could I would put something much uh, thicker on this but I can't it's just not possible and the reason being is that uh, the thicker I get, the higher it is off the pick guard, 
and that's no good. It's got to be thin, 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 thin. Think, think thin. But once this glue sets up in a couple hours, that will make a nice little surface for it to hold it like a very thin layer of plastic added to it to help with the strength of it. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Makes sense to me. And when I finish that glue up, this cure I'll go to the front. But this is much slower uh, drying glue. This is going to take a while, a while, but it's thicker. I don't want water thin on this. I want thick. And anything that uh, seeps through will go onto my little cloth there. But now it's evenly spread all over the area. Like I said, this dirty area back here, I'll cover that with aluminum as well, aluminum tape. Because it looks like it may need it for electronic purposes, but I'm not really sure. But I'll just put it back because it was there before. But I want this to bond here. Do my finger here, along this edge here, and back to the back of it. All three things bind together, and for this to create one little, like, plastic shelf type of thing, all inside, under, and all through, which is what it does. It, it does do that. It's filament tape. Just gra just barely raises that uh, tape up above what it's touching. And that glue will get underneath there and stick on top and on bottom of the tape itself and glue to that aluminum. And that should do the trick. Make a nice little hard surface again. Now, yeah, you can still bend it and break it. And it will break every time you try to bend it. I guarantee you that. But uh, let's hopefully that uh, once it's on there, they won't be taking it off too often. And I still have a... Uh, an idea to put another, a hole in the guitar as well as the pick guard and uh, use my little reamer to uh, put a hole in it, same type of shape that uh, is on the front. Let's see how well that does to hold it in place. Because I only have one, two spots to hold it. I think a spot up here uh, will kind of come close to matching what was on there already. And maybe I'll put one where it was. It does already have a hole. But I do need to fill one hole in with some wood putty and color it up with one of the uh, color sticks I just got in for this purpose. I bought one of these color sticks. Whoopsie. Huh. Still too tight. A color stick to hide that uh, putty on the guitar once I fill in that little tiny hole. It's not even the, not even the whole hole is showing, just the little the lips of the hole is showing uh, beyond the, the uh, edge of the pick guard. So, we're just about finished with this. It took me a long time to get it done, but it is uh, getting there, slowly but surely. And yes, you'll still be able to see a black line between the two. That can't be helped. But, uh, you know, look better than a bunch of cro you know, cracked up and split off and <laughs> off pieces all over it that were glued to it before. So hang in there, guys. Well, as you can see, this side now is like hard as a rock uh, on this side. <laughs> What I want to do is take some additional uh, foil tape and cover this nasty stuff up. It may have been, it may have been on there to uh, help with electronics, I'm not really sure, but I'll sure cover this up with the uh, electrical tape again, the metal tape, I'm sorry. But I can't add any more tape to this area here because it's going to it's going to raise it too high and cause a problem with the uh, way it sits on the uh, guitar itself. But I'm not finished yet. I've got to come in here. Finish gluing this part up, right? And then drill a couple, well, drill one extra hole in here, wood putty the guitar, drill a hole here for the guitar, and then pretty much be finished. But it's gonna have a straight line across. There's no getting around, you know, <laughs> there's no getting around that. But it looks pretty nice to be hand done. So hang in there, guys. All right, what we gotta do next is get in there and get that uh, tissue paper off there, that uh, paper towel off these holes that bled through. And it's gonna take a, uh, safety razor and just get in there and trim that right off making sure I only take the uh, paper and none of the pick guard and let's make sure it's laying nice and flat and work myself around I can see right through it the paper the blade's showing up so I can see what I'm doing and any extra I'll just get that off as well 
Now, what it's doing is taking some of that stain off the uh, hole itself, but that'll be covered up anyway with the uh, part. Stand for this right here, but it's coming off readily. It's no problems. Not taking any pick guard with it, which I didn't think it would. But you gotta be careful. You don't want to go deep on this. You just want to have it skim the surface and pull that stuff off there. And it's gonna leave it just a little bit of trace of glue on it. But that'll come up once I get to it. Now, so I haven't glued down the uh, crack yet. And we use a different type of glue, well, <laughs> same type of glue, but a different gluing uh, rate in that it's going to set up pretty, for, you know, pretty quick, pretty darn quick, PDQ, okay. I'll tell you, working with small parts can really get your eyesight after a while. I'm wearing magnifying glasses, extension glasses. Now what I need to go ahead and do is break down and either buy a uh, visor with magnifiers on it, you know, <laughs> look like Mr. Gadget. Okay, come on, baby. Let's get the hell off. There he comes. Or get a uh, magnifying loop with a uh, light on a swing arm. Let's magnify. I'm just getting that chips off here, that glue that ran too much. And once that's off there, well, we're ready to glue that other side, that, that crack, the crack itself. Again, the good part is that this will be hidden pretty much by a part. But it's all coming off anyway. Now there. Oh, my better half just came in and brought me some uh, a present. Look at this, guys. Isn't that nice? Yeah, love it when I get little presents. She does it occasionally just to make me happy, and I really appreciate it. It's pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and finish getting all this glue off here so I can finish the uh, part up. Still on there. It's just hard to see. It's white on white. So that don't help much. I'll get all that glue off there. That extra. Well, it's not going to hurt anything. Like I said it's going to be underneath the part. So There we go. Now it's just stuck in that hole. It's the paper. I got cut free. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so we got the part all cleaned up again, and we're going to just lay a line down on this little crack area here, and uh, just put a little weight underneath it. This may be enough, a little height underneath it, to uh, get it to set properly and stay up against that part. About like that. This is, like I said, it's really quick drying. So. All I need is just a little whippette on the uh, tip of my glue, and we'll go from there. So hang in there, guys. Well, okay, that should be uh, heavy enough to hold it in place. And like I said, I'm going to take this little whippet and go right down this little crack, spilling it in just gently. That soak in any of the excess, I'm just going to wipe it right off. I want to get in that crack very good. There's not much way you can keep from showing the crack itself. I mean, it's going to just be there. It can't help that. And the excess stuff can get off there. Now, let that sit for about an hour in this uh, warmer temperature and come back and see how she's doing. So hang in there, guys. Okay, so I've cut away uh, some of the, sorry, I've cut some of the tape to cover up the old uh, spots where the electrical tape was. I'm sorry, I keep saying it. The metal tape was. 
and I don't know if there's an issue then or not, but uh, they did have it on there, so I'm putting it right back. I don't want the uh, guy on his guitar to be surprised, like, wow, where's that feedback coming from? <laughs> and think that I caused right now. Just cover that up very nicely. There. Okay, so that's done. Extra tape, throw that away. And the next step, guys, is to put this, uh, put the holes back in here where they belong. Okie dokie. Sorry, put the holes back where they belong. <laughs> and get the uh, thing put back on the guitar itself. Well, it's the very last part of uh, fixing up this pickguard guitar. And like I told you earlier, I'll put new uh, fender size uh, screws in it because the old one is just plain worn out. And I'm not going to do that to the guitar, put uh, worn out, boogered up screws on it. And usually I get like, you know, five to ten bucks for doing this. You know, bring these screws in because they're not free, obviously. But I order them in enough, you know, quantity that I have to charge a lot for them. But, you know, since he didn't ask for this, I'll probably just, you know, let it go. You know, it's broken. Back cover, not much I can do. The part fell apart in three pieces. So I'm just going to put the screw in it and hold it in place so I can do. And to put something metal in it and try to hold it, nah, it's just going to come off again. It's just too small to break. I hope y'all can see this. <laughs> My hands are always in the way. As well as I put a different set of uh, control mods on it, which I think are much better looking than the black ones he has, but I still have those in case uh, he decided he didn't like these gold ones I put on it. Those gold ones really work well with this wood color and uh, the antique color of the pick guard. I think they look pretty cool. But if he doesn't agree, we'll put his black ones back on there. Of course, we always give old parts back to the owners, too. We don't keep any old parts here. They're not a lot of use to us. Like old potentiometers, old tuners, old saddles, things like that. You know, no one wants to buy stuff that's so old that you got to replace it. They sure don't want that put on their guitar. All right, well, that's the back up. It's done. Last thing to do with this guitar is tune it up and shoot the video on it. And then that will be that. Have him play it too. See what he thinks about it. Now, this one I'm talking about by these gold, uh, gold ones. I think those look really nice on this guitar compared to those black ones he had on there. And he had a black three-way cover on this. Uh... Also, so uh, I'm gonna cut away. Uh, tune this guitar to pitch and start working on the intonation of it. This needs to be intonated and adjust the bridge accordingly. So hang in there, guys. Well, so we got the pitch. We'll wait, uh, wait to it to you know, stretch out a little bit and get back to it and go from there. Alrighty. Of course, we're swapping the in and out guitars today, doing you know, some finish ups on them. Aha, down there a message. Who's bringing the guitar over today? Yep, it figures. Okay, so one of my contract guys bringing the guitar over. He's in town. So I need to clear the benches up and get his guitar fixed up so he can get back on the road again. On the road again. I can't wait for his guitar to get back on that road again. Having to sit down here broken, busted is a sin. I can't wait to get his guitar back on the road again. Here's a little Ibanez. It's all fixed up and set up. Nice guitar. Anyway, when he shows up, I'll just give it back to him and they can go, he can go from there. Maybe I'll get some video on him later on playing it. Whoops, let me show you this real quick, <laughs> the repair job. Anyway, uh, 
you got a broken pick guard that just needs a uh, drop in piece of it or you want the pick guard built I can do a much better job on a full pick guard than restoration because uh, I use a router to, to uh, uh, cut my uh, forms out with jigs but anyway it came out pretty nice I think you know considering how you know banged up it was so any questions give me a holler Dave in Texas Bye.